very differ, different with the classical fractional order calculus, but you can still see the, the kind of quasi <laughs> semi group, okay? The kind of semi group property here. And then, property says, property 6 says, this operator is an ident identity operator, that is to say, I f x equals to f x here, and zero here, zero here is a sigma k. The last property. In the last property, we finally see the generalized fraction or the derivative in this form. That is to say, that is to say, d applies to i. Uh, to fx equals to fx, that is to say d times i here is, a, is also an identity operator here. So, based on this relationship, we can define one of the definition, uh, one of the generalized fraction of the derivatives like this form. And here all the parameters are defined. So, in these seven properties, we finally get a possible way to define the fractional order, generalized fractional order derivative here. So, after after introduction of these properties, we'll show the fractional order equations and how to how to solve it. So, let's see this generalized fractional order equation which is defined as B here is a fractional order operator like this and sorry, I should write y, y x here it should be y x here so B y equals to f x B y x equals to f x how to solve this equation, this generalized fractional order equation. The answer is here. Yx here equals to y0x plus capital Yx and y0x and the capital Yx is defined here. You can see it. Y0x is a parallel function, is a summation of parallel function and the capital Yx is kind of integral in this form which is related to major g function uh, with index equals to m. So, about how to about the proof of this conclusion um, there is a good book written by Virginia so I have that book in my backpack forgot it here so you said in Fraction of the calculus in ODE in PDE, the the integral transforms plays a crucial role because we can use Laplace transform or Fourier transform to get many properties of the solution. Here, in generalized fraction of the calculus, we can also define uh, some new kind of transforms which is related to the major G function or or even Fox H function. So here's the definition. The capital G transform is defined in this in this way. You can see it here. It's a still an infinity integral here starts at zero and the kernel here is a major G function in this form mm there's a zero zero times a parallel function and times fx here. So this is a definition of G transform. And then you remember the fractional order calculator operator we just used in that differential equation. Here b equals to this one. The g transform of this b parameter has this form. So that is to say we can use a generalized fractional order transform to get the oh sorry. I mean we can use generalized we can use G transform to define oh, I'll see it. we can define the G transform of the generalized 
fractional order operators. This is a basic idea. So, actually, this part is the most interesting thing in this presentation. That is to say, you remember uh, in, lab, in classical calculus, there is a final value theorem of Laplace transform. That is to say, for a function fx, if all the poles are left on the left hand plane of the complex, complex plane, then there is a relationship like this. So, limit s to 0, 0 plus s times fx. This one equals to limit t to infinity large ft and the capital fs is a Laplace transform of ft and then vice versa to infinity s fs equals to limit t to 0 plus ft this is called final value zero the most amazing thing here is in generalized fractional order calculus we still have this kind of uh, final value theorems like this. The first one, the first one is the initial value theorem, and then the last 33, uh, 23 is the final value theorems. That is to say, sometimes we don't need to know exactly what is fx, but we only what we know is the uh, distributions of the poles of fx. Then we can use these two theorems to find the initial values and the final values of fx. So, this, these two theorems are really cool. I was shocked a lot when I first find, found these two theorems in Virginia's book. So, here is about some further discussions. Actually, there are uh, many, many, lots of, lots of unsolved problems in generalized fractional order calculators. I think it's a good thing because we have more works to do on it. So, for further discussions, easy about discuss, easy about parts of this presentation. What we use the kernel. What we use the is the major G function. As I said, the major G function is a special case of Fox H function. So, if we, re if we replace the major G function by the Fox H function, more generalized forms and the definitions and the results could be, could be derived. So, the other part, the other thing is, I just copied the titles of a paper written by Virginia. So it says all the special functions are fractional order differ integrals of elementary functions. You know, this this topic, it's, this title is really fancy. You know, if you know what is elementary functions, you know, actually, for the elementary functions, you can refer to that paper. You can just serve this topic on the Google. So. If the elementary functions are, are well defined, then all, all the hundreds of special functions are the special cases of fractional order differentiation or integrals of those elementary functions. Th this conclusion is really, really interesting. So, here is a conclusion. Compare with, compare with classical fractional order calculus, we replaced the parallel kernel by, by a Fox H function kernel. Then uh, define the, the whole part of the generalized fractional order calculus. We can get a lot of conclusions, interesting results, and a lot of problems. So we still have a lot of work, many works to do in the future. That's all for today. Thank you.